you cover technology, you know so much about technology, and that was a crucial part to how Jared Kushner helped his father-in-law win here, was technology. They had the sit-down you write about, yeah. and Donald Trump says, hey, can Jared, Jared, who you say, by the way, was been, been on Twitter since 2009 and never tweeted. Never tweeted, very private, very father -in -law quiet. Father-in-law says, okay, I want you to run my Facebook. And yeah. from there, it took off. Took off, they're having um, McDonald's egg uh, filet of fishes on the private jet and saying, take, oh, take this over. And Jared is in real estate, but he invests in a lot of tech companies. So he knows people like Peter Thiel, his brother Josh is a very formidable venture capitalist. He made all these phone calls, talked to the best marketers around, and he treated Trump like an e-commerce company, like a consumer tech company. All you do is you want to get attention and you want to get eyeballs and you want to get voters. That's what he did. So he had, what, $8,000 a day they were getting on hats, and he managed to turn that to $80,000. Yeah, just doing simple targeting. Like, Trump was a very unique we never had a, a, um, a candidate like him. So they used targeting. They found a way to get people on Facebook and Twitter. They were going from $8,000 a day selling hats and stickers on the site to 80000 a day. And that gave them money to help run the marketing. But also, it turned all these people into walking Trump billboards wearing all the gear. So that was just one thing. Then they evolved into this 100-person secret data center down in San Antonio. And they had data do everything. Data determined his schedule, his rallies, even what he spoke about in the rallies. So they knew. Even what he spoke about at the rallies. Yes. So to us, it seems like, oh, here he goes. We know we're used to this cul-de-sac or that. Yep. You're saying this was driven by a team of 100 people in a secret warehouse. Yep, and they tweak the speeches, and then they use TV. Instead of just saying, like, oh, I want to buy, you know, 100 points in Philadelphia, they say, we know that people that watch NCIS or care about Obamacare, let's run a commercial for that. And they found a way to kind of micro-target television. Wow. I mean, it's just because it's amazing because, yeah. you know, keep hearing that there, there wasn't a lot of planning here. But you're saying Jared was at the center of it. There was a lot. And, and in the interview, uh, you talk about, uh, you know, you say when you talk to Jared, he said um, he was, uh, people knew they could trust him, that he wasn't going to leak. Yes. What was he like in person when you speak to him? Because as I say, he keeps a no profile. What was he like in person? He's really polite and he's just, he's obsessively polite and guarded. Doesn't mean he's quiet. He's very personable, but he's controlled. Um, you know, there's a lot of questions. He's a paradox. Everything with him being, you know, an Orthodox Jewish, then supporting someone who has some alt-right followers. The fact that he comes from a prolific Democrat family and he's running a Republican campaign. And I asked him all these questions, even about if he, you know, kind of put the axe in Chris Christie. He never lost his cool, and he just gave a very thoughtful, not, not programmed, but a thoughtful answer to each one of those questions in the story. In terms of the alt-right, before we go, though, you sure. say um, that, that his Judaism was very important yes. in his office, right there. On display. That's the first thing you see. Is it's you know there's books, there's symbols. I mean, it's just he's, it's he's he keeps um, Shabbos and everything, so he's, it's part of his life and it's very apparent. Opposed to Trump, when you go in, it's all the ego of Trump. His uh, Jared's walls are very just um, very sparse, and you can see that he's a man of faith.